Well, food webs are basically how ecosystems function. So every time we interact with our environment, consuming, if you eat bread, that bread was produced in a particular ecosystem. And we don't fundamentally know how most of them actually work. Where does the energy come from? How does it get from a resource like a plant into a top predator? And so they're really fundamental to understanding how environments are put together. And if you don't know how it's put together, then you can't know how it's going to respond when things change. So if conditions change, if global warming continues, if environments start to change in the way that they are actually interacting, then the animals themselves are going to have to adapt to that change. And we don't understand fundamentally their capacity for that flexibility. Bats are a wonderful model because they're so diverse. They occupy virtually every ecological niche we have. They're found from the tree line up north, right down as far as the tips of South America and Africa. And so they inhabit virtually every ecological zone we know, other than the Arctic and a couple of small islands. And within those places that they live, you can find them occupying all the different trophic niches. They're pollinators, they're seed dispersals, they're carnivores, they're parasites, they're insectivores. And so they give us the ability to study a lot of different ways you can interact in an environment using a single group of animals. We use a variety of techniques. Um, in the field, we use live captures. So you set up nets, you work all night long, and you actually catch the animals to look at them. And from there, we're looking at morphology. What do they look like? And that may involve looking at their ears. So bigger ears means you hear better. Then we can use more passive techniques. A lot of what we do is acoustic surveys. Bats are famous for their acoustic ability. Um, not all bats can echolocate, but most of them can, and they use different techniques. And so we might use a lot of different types of acoustic arrays in the forest to monitor their presence or their absence and see what they're doing because we can often tell from echolocation if they're hunting or if they're searching or commuting between places. But you can tell a lot about a person from the waste that they produce. And the same thing with animals. We can look at that waste and we can actually track back the habitat where they were. So what's really novel about our research is that we're using some of these new sequencing technologies that produce millions and millions of sequences to ask a really old question. How does an animal interact with its environment? And what we're finding with this new technology is we get a lot more resolution. We see more and more connection. And we're learning some really interesting things. So for instance, within bats, they're much more flexible than we thought. A good example is there's a very common nectar bat, so it's known for pollinating plants, that it turns out it's very, very good at being an insectivore. So when the conditions are right, it can change from being a mutualist within an environment to being a predator. And we didn't know it was as flexible as it is. And so when environment changes, it has the capacity to completely change how it interacts. And that's really important as things get drier or warmer or wetter. And as we see more extreme environmental conditions, it gives us a better idea of how something might adapt to change.